François, are yes. you ready to present? Uh... Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming for the first uh, IGOS webinar. Oh, well, not, not so fast, please. So, I'm François Foucault. I'm an orthopedic and self tissue surgeon in Gap in the south of France. Thank you for uh, being there. And I will present a case, two cases, in fact, of uh, tricipital evolution treated by a Novatin 4000 tandem. Uh, tandem to basis with an early follow up, uh, 45 days follow up on two cats. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Tricipital uh, adoption in cats are. So it seems that uh, Francois has uh, some difficulties with uh, internet. Come back. Sorry for that. We have some uh, internet problem over there. So I said we have uh, we don't have a lot of uh, tricipital evolution in case only six cases are described in literature. All of them uh, had the traumatic issues and they were treated by a suture, tandem suture, reinforced by a bone tunnel and protected by a cast. So next slide, please. The diagnosis, uh, all the cats, all the cats were lame. Um, they couldn't walk on the leg. Uh, we had a belly triceps, and, uh, which was purpose unusual. We did not have any improvement with NSAID. And uh, what we can say is we had a classical radiographic and echographic imaging. Uh, can you pass the next slide, please? So we have those two cats. These are two females, 13 months old. Uh, we have pussy cat, which is 4.5 kilograms, and pirouette, which is 3.9 kilograms. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just. Okay, so we on the radiographic and echographic imaging we have the same lesion and uh, on this lesion we have a little pieces of bone which are part of the tricipital uh, ligaments that are tip of some olecranon uh, attachments on the left and on the right you can see the echographic imaging and uh, with uh, the uh, rupture of the fibers so uh, next slide please I choose uh, Buten's technique. Well, it's a modified Buten's technique. Uh, in uh, 2018, yes, what Philippe Buten has presented the case of Chosset. It was a salvage on a tricipital rupture on seven years old spaniel. And uh, this dog has many surgery after a uh, uh, mundane accident. And uh, there was a real failure on the tricipital attachment. So Philippe used a Novaten and a bone tunnel interference screw. And after uh, putting the dog uh, in uh, recovery with uh, um, Robert Jones, uh, yeah, the dog had a complete recovery. Next slide, please. What I, why did I have to modify the Philippitas technique? It is because the interference screw is initially in the olecranon. But if I had a break of the olecranon, if I had a fracture of the olecranon, because the screw is really huge, uh, it will be a major complication because those tiny bones won't be easy to fix in case of rupture. So I choose to be lower than the hand of the ligament. And uh, I choose also the largest part of the, of the ulna. But in those cases, with this so big interference screw, we need a plan B and a plan C in case of complication. And you will see this complication occurs. Next slide, please. So here we are. We have this, uh, the body of the muscle and the tendon, which is retract. We have a bullet muscle. And you can see the rupture at the side, at the next to the olecranon. Next slide, please. First of all, we make the first tunnel with a 2.7 drill uh, protected by a sheet from the top of the olecranon to the lateral side of the ulna. 
So we just drill uh, across the uh, cranium. Next slide, please. And this is a clever part, I think, uh, that uh, Philip uh, found. Uh, we have, we will stitch uh, the prothesis in the groove that we made by opening the muscle and the tendon. We put the tendon in the groove and then we stitches with our uh, eye stitches and with classical PTS uh, 2.0 uh, with X uh, style uh, stitches on each, each side of the muscle. Then I close the muscle and the ligament over. Next slide, please. Once done, we use a wire, a guy wire to, to, to put the prosthesis through the canal. It, work, it works right, quite well, even with a 2.7 millimeters uh, tunnel. Next slide, please. At this time, we choose the tunnel for the interference groove. We put a 1.1K wire in the good direction, with, which is the lateral, medial, caudal, cranial, um, distal, uh, proximal way. And once this pin is uh, fixed, we use a cannulated drill, 3.2 millimeters, to drill the tunnel for the interference groove. Next slide, please. Once done, we have to thread the hulna. So we put on the interference screw, we screw it on, then we screw it off. After that, as the same way we passed the prosthesis in the early cranium, we pass it through the tunnel of the hulna. Then we, have a, we keep a good tension with a clamp. We tear the prosthesis till we have no movement of the tendon next to the olecranum when you move it, uh, extension and deflection. Next slide, please. When you have the good flexion, you apply back the interference screw in the tunnel, in the interference tunnel. You screw it on and then you can cut the prosthesis you, you have uh, over. Next slide, please. And it's at this moment then we can have major complication. On the left side, we have pussycat. There were no problem with pussycat because it's a 4.5 kilograms cat, quite big. So we didn't, we have some uh, material to put a screw in. For Pirouette, it was more complicated. And when we put on the screw, when we screw it on, the interference screw, we hear that crack. It was the ulna that was cracking, so we fractured the ulna. Immediately, we stop and we put a lower tunnel, a lower screw. And uh, we use a guy wire to ensure that uh, the, the forces uh, will be good and we won't, we won't have another crack. So we put it either and we cut the, the extra ligament. Next yard, please. After that, we have to repair the tendon. My, I usually use the case suture. I, 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 I like them, I use them, but it's not the best suture for ligament, uh, for tendon or ligament uh, reparation. And if you do that, you should prefer the three-loop suture, with, which is a really good uh, biomechanic suture and don't let gap when you put some tension. So prefer the three-loop plane if you do the same kind of surgery. Next slide, please. So this is post-op, immediate post-op. As you see on the right slide, you have the interference screw, which is below the, uh, on the screw on the left side, and uh, it's on the opposite way. Even if on this uh, radiograph, the right uh, photograph is inversed, uh, so you can see the screw is in the other side. That's why it, I made that because at the first uh, squid on, it cracked. So I choose this way. Next slide, please. On the lateral view, you can see uh, where uh, the interventions are, are placed. Uh, 
in bus stop, we don't have any trouble in pronation, supination, extreme flexion, and extreme extension. And uh, it worked well, no interference at all. Next slide, please. In immediate post op, we use NSF, meloxicam, for uh, six days, morphine drugs, fentanyl, no antibiotics, and mainly no external contention. And that's the point. Next slide, please. We have only a small bandage on the elbow, and the cat goes on, like that. Next slide, please. So we are 15 days post up, everything okay, no bone crack, no bone fracture. Yes, we got it. And you can see it's pretty good. Next slide, please. So you can see, uh, uh, next slide, it's okay. Victor, next slide. Oh, it's a video. Okay, we have this 15 days follow up, as you can see. The cats are walking. This is Pussycat. We are 15 days after surgery. No bondage, and the cat is, has a good walking. Uh, pirouette is more comfortable. She's a little painful when you have when you're, when you're for arm manipulation. It's pronation and supination, which, which is quite difficult. Next slide, please. Hello, I've lost on you. Okay, so as you can see, uh, Pussycat even jumped uh, in, the, in the room. So uh, she was really comfortable with that surgery. Uh, otherwise, Pirouette was more shy and it was quite difficult to let her walk. So she just sits and don't move. Don't just, we just have some pain manipulating pronation, supination. Extension and flexion were okay, so that was good. Next slide, please. So this is 45 days follow-up. Yeah. Okay, we have a good improvement at 45 days uh, follow-up, and you can see a good healing of the bone, so that was okay. We don't have any catastrophic issues. That was great for me, for those two cases. Next slide, please. As you can see on the right down, we have a little swallow of soft tissues. And we still have a little um, trouble when we touch it at 45 days. But it seems to be OK. So can you, can you send the, the movie, please, Victor? So this is 45 days follow-up. Uh, well, this cat is quite okay. She's just leaping for the first for the first step. Then she walks and jump. She, when you manipulate the arm, you don't have any trouble. No pain, flexion, extension, pronation, supination. Well, she's too shy. Cold walking, cold lameness. But her owner, says she played well. She can jump and she has good follow-up. The, the owner is really happy with that. So what about the echographic imaging? Next slide. 45 days, we have a longitudinal cut and the echographic, I don't know if you, yes, that's better like that. We don't have any reaction around the ligaments and we have a good integration of the prothesis the muscle, we don't have any trouble over there. And the next slide, if we do a cut uh, transverse skirt, you can see the U shape of the tendon because, uh, as I said, you, you open the belly of the muscle and you apply your prosthesis at the roof of uh, this, uh, this opening and you stitch uh, all uh, at each side the tendon to the muscle, then you close the muscle. That's what you have in the transverse cut, it's a U shape of the prosthesis over there. Next slide, please. So, as we said, we don't have any trouble and have a good improvement on the two cats, on the two cats. Next slide, please. Ah, okay. Can you skip the video? Yes. 
In conclusion, we did have a good improvement without external contention, and that was great because I don't like to draw this on articulation. We had a fast recovery, that was good also. What was bad is we did have really big interference crew. It's really huge compared to the size to the Hula. So we need to add the next generation. Please, Victor, give, give us the 2.53 or 3.5 interference crew, and that will be great. Thank you for our attention. Do you have some questions? Okay, it's a very nice case, Francois. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of people are uh, congratulating you. You can see the, in the chat some, uh, some of them. Any question about the case? So, Victor, do you want to end this uh, conference? Yes, it seems that there is no any more questions. So, well, I wanted to thank uh, everyone for its attendance and uh, especially the three of you for, for your conference. Thank you very much. Um, at Novatech, developing a physiological solution, we are very proud of being able to, to support uh, such initiatives like IGOS Group. So thank you very much for this. and. Uh, and um, well, we can finish this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.